Hello everybody, my name's Steve Faulkner. Today I'll be reviewing Balloon Oracle, a balloon prediction system by HJ. Before we do this, can you please like and subscribe? I'll get through this as quickly as possible. Obviously now, obviously, not necessarily obviously, because there's only a few episodes in, I have the Steve Faulkner Magic Show podcast. Uh, majority of that being my Beyond the Wand interviews. I've so far interviewed the lovely Jack Rhodes and Noel Quilter uh, with a load of questions that are designed to go beyond just the magic. What makes these people tick, inspires them, and you're going to be Googling a lot of stuff. I've had this feedback already after listening to these uh, these podcasts with film recommendations, book recommendations, different things uh, that make them who they are and more importantly inspire their magic. And of course there's magic chat in there as well. And the thing that runs the whole process process is onlinemagic.co. That's my membership site, 900 plus videos, zero negative feedback. And I ask for it from members. Uh, see what everybody's talking about. Check out onlinemagic.co. Uh, live sessions every week-ish, unless I'm working. Even running live sessions from gigs, uh, if I can. So uh, loads to be looking at there. Have a look at that. If you look at the podcast, well, you are going to look at the podcast, surely. Uh, please give it a review, a five-star review uh, on Apple and wherever you get your podcast, just give it a search and the links will be below. That'll be lovely. It makes all the difference and I'm doing all this on my own. As you can tell by my voice, I'm a bit knackered. <laughs> so, uh, Balloon Oracle is, as it says, a balloon prediction system, but what does that mean? First up, uh, full disclosure, I have not taken this on stage because this is for me, a stage and parlor thing. It's not really a close-up. You could arguably do stuff in close-up, but it's it's not really for that. But I have tested it extensively again and again and again. And again. Uh, on my stories the other day, there was a um, <laughs> very funny moment where I popped the balloon and nearly had a bit of a turn um, by accident, which actually happened quite a lot. So, the... There's a lot more to this than you initially think. The thing itself is somebody, let's say somebody holds a balloon for a whatever period. It can be through the whole show until the end. They've got to be a bit careful because the balloon bursts um, before you want it to. That's not going to be good. So I wouldn't maybe do the whole show. But the beginning of the routine, someone's uh, holding a balloon. There is something inside of it and you. it's most basic and I wouldn't do this someone can name any playing card you go to your case or whatever you get your big magic wand out more on that in a second um take the end off it oops there it is pop the balloon with the very sharp end and uh, balloon burst and the prediction comes out of it so it couldn't be any playing card that's good isn't it, it can be way more than that this comes with the wand which is the main gimmick and a a setup which is a, is basically an on-stage index so you can have 52 playing cards very very easy to do you don't have to remember anything really it's all there and you can set it up how you want it comes with a kind of 3d printed i presume i'm not really up on such things um little thing that you've got to put together which would can either be screwed taped wazier or whatever to your case holding everything you need it to hold someone names a card you go and get the wand out at the same time get everything do what you need to do in order to be able to do the trick that's great and it is easy you, you, whenever people think of indexes and we've all been talking about indexes recently with certain things it's not like that there's no feeling it's, with practice you're going to be able to do it but let's remember that on stage it's not like in close-up you have time you you always are consistently going back to your case to do things so you've got all those times to do what you need to do and do the finale of this trick which could arguably be the finale of a show when you're ready what that means is it could be any chosen word. It could be any chosen number. It could be, I was going to say a false number, but a non-false number. It can be anything. When you can get the information from someone and they could just tell you or you can get it secretly, that information can be in that balloon when you pop it. Then I was thinking of wiki test words. So you do wiki test. If you know what wiki test is, someone looks at Wikipedia Mark, from Mark Kirsten, you know, one of the most loved apps in the world some of them looks at uh, their phone wikipedia 
chooses either uh, types in any search in wikipedia and can either choose a big word any big word from that search or you can use the search itself you've got that information even though it's happened on their phone loads of different apps that do different types of things now but one of those words can be in the balloon and they've been holding that balloon before the trick ever started and that again is very easy very way easier than the playing card but it doesn't have to be that it can be any literally anywhere you can get a book a non-gimmicked book you can do book tests of any book say look at any word what's the word and that can be so you've got this is a prediction of anything inside this balloon and don't forget the beauty of it is they shake the balloon first depending on what balloon you use the audience can see that there's something in there folded up bit of paper falls to the floor and it says so that's all before you've even started it so you've when you realize that you realize the potential in this now this isn't anything new as is credited and credited a lot you know this goes way back so balloon predictions go way way back and i'm not going to go through all the credits but they're on there and this manner of prediction goes back to corinda and you know earlier i, I, I would have thought um well it does i think but i can't remember the credits that i read but getting the thing into a thing and, and with a gimmick and whether it's a knife or something else does it work and then this needs to be trustworthy the way the trick works even though it is easy if you're not careful timing could be off and things could look very ropey and my my main concern was things hanging up catching and not doing what they were meant to do or doing what they were meant to do late so that's where i did loads and i mean loads of bursting balloons as balloons all over my office making sure that there was no way that this was going to happen now don't get back to me if this happens to you but it just didn't there's no way and the size of the bits of paper that you can reveal can be a small billet where the audience member could read it it can be a playing card of course but it can be an a5 i think it is the one that's just a bit smaller than a4 which means you can unfold it that's a pretty decent bit of paper there so that works with a larger audience and if you use you know if it's well lit and you've got decent ink and it's you know it's thick enough then majority of people are going to be able to read that but if not of course if you've got a massive theater you've got someone to read read it out as well so you've got a miracle here it works every time there's nothing really to go wrong from the extensive use of giving it there's nothing that can be worn down really i don't think it's all pretty you know there's nothing yeah there there's no, there's no springs or anything like that um and that's what i was thinking if you sort of overuse that and i don't think there is anyway but so there seems to be no problem but there's one problem that is going to be problematic for some people and depending on your performance and your performance style may not work for you and it's not flawless so the the main thing is it's a big magic wand now if you're the sort of mentalist that doing a very serious moody mentalism piece you're going to have to find some justification for that big magic wand to come out now it could be that you you make these black and i think that makes it a little bit more mysterious so you can make the top and the bottom black um and you can say look it's a it's a more uh you can say some story about where magic wands have come from and i've done that before there's that and that's going to be the main thing really now i wouldn't have a problem with it because my show has humor in it and i could very easily justify that i could you know just root around in, a, in my case and go oh, i've got this oh, let's use that there's a lovely thing uh henry harris and this is uh, which i failed to mention comes from henry harris's company as well and i trust um henry harris presents stuff completely I, I just love all the stuff so far so this is a very powerful piece of magic it's an easy piece of magic angles yes you're not going to do it surrounded but we've established that it. it's not for it's, it's for stage and parlor it's great for those people who want to go out with something easy and powerful and i do quite complex stuff on stage and I'd, I'd quite happily do this on stage whether i will or not don't get upset if i'm not doing it in a year um but i when i was trying this out i did have a cabaret show that night and i was tempted to take it out i didn't because i wanted to do something that i could you know i've done a hundred times but i think most of you are going to get this be able to do it straight away and start thinking about all the things you could do with this so really really strong stuff again the only flaw really is the fact it's a magic wand um the, as i was going to say henry does have a and i think it was his um a nice presentation where you get like a sharp pencil and a magic wand say which do you want me to burst a balloon with and obviously they're going to say uh the pen the wand to wind you up or they might do because it's not sharp and then you take the thing off and there's a sharp thing there. so there's lots you can do with that as well lots of room for space lots of room for presentation and you know 
uh, it's very, very good. Anything else wrong with it? Because I know people want me to say, <laughs> but then I wouldn't have spent the time with it as rubbish. But it's great. It's really, really great. Loads of ideas on the um, on the performance on the on the thing, and I'm not going to go for all of them. And this is going to be a weird edit. Sorry, my battery just ran out. That was annoying. Uh, but needless to say, yeah, all really good. I think we've covered everything. Please do use the links below if you are interested, you want to find out more. Thank you, Henry Harris, for sending this to me. Great stuff. And please now go and have a look at onlinemagic.co, as for reasons I've said before, uh, and the podcast for reasons I've said before. And let me know what you think. I, you know, I don't, with podcasts, you don't tend to get the same feedback you get with videos because there's nowhere really to comment. It's a bit more of a faff. So if you've got any feedback, do email me, steve at onlinemagic.co. Uh, it's really, really helpful because sometimes you do feel like you're pissing in the wind sometimes with this stuff. And for those of you that have provided me, me with feedback, thank you very, very much. It really does make all the difference uh, for us people putting stuff out there. So thanks very much. Uh, like and subscribe. Take care.